Oh my God, look at this nasty Attila rally coming at our flag here in KVK. This is our arrow tower. You can see the health is really low. We've got markers. We're freaking out. We've got field presence, which is good, but we're letting everybody know you need to be here. You got to fill the garrison. Okay. You got to put whatever you can in the garrison. We got this nasty Attila rally coming at us. I'm just going to go ahead and hit play and you guys can see how we handle this scenario. Okay. Um, uh, yeah um so so okay so you can so basically uh the big the big bad uh scary rally uh it it it, it, it was it was trying to go um but then we just put we just put a troop and we just stood them there and we just we just stood there and then we just had these we just had these arrow towers just chipping away just doing free damage and that's pretty much it pretty much nothing to worry about nothing they could do they, they 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 can't they can't get through the they can't get through they got nothing they just have to sit there and they just have to wait as their as their rally slowly dies and look they're just sitting they're just sitting there watching they're like man this sucks we got a bunch of troops in there and they're just and they're just they're just sitting there what's going on guys cheers okay so what you just saw here this video of this attila rally is sort of one of the things that we've been dealing with in the latest kvk game mode heroic anthem power up so in this version of kvk we have blockades right and we've we've seen this okay in the update notes and i think chiskel might have covered it on his channel as well you have peaceful and aggressive mode and basically uh if you have troops that are not allied troops they can't go past you uh, with this blockade mode and and what ends up happening is scenarios like this where you've got a big huge scary rally and you could literally stop it in its tracks with a single tier one unit um here in this in this scenario we just bunched up around it uh, and then they couldn't do anything um and if they cancel the rally well then the the armies that come out of the rally are trapped in a circle of enemies and we and they can't go anywhere because those armies are also blockaded uh by by all of the troops here and so it's basically instant death for them and this is one of the things that i want to talk about uh, in this video we're going to go over some of the pros and cons of this new kvk game mode because it's been maybe 27 28 hours since pass four opened for us and we've been fighting pretty much the whole time which has been a lot of fun honestly um it's been a really good fight but we've noticed some things that are really odd about this game mode the first one being the blockade feature now at the time of recording this this is something that you can do you can block rallies entire rallies with just a couple of armies um it's my understanding that lilith is changing this it seems to be the case that rallies moving forward aren't going to function the same way as troops uh the, meaning that they will ignore the blockades and they'll be able to go through i guess i don't really know um but this certainly feels cheesy uh it certainly feels cheesy when you realize that you can build these arrow towers with your siege units using legendary commanders that you get for free um and you can essentially defeat a rally without losing a single troop now keep in mind these arrow towers uh, are dealing slightly wounded units which means that when you defeat this rally you're actually not filling a hospital you're not killing any troops it's just popping the rally everyone goes back to their city and it's as if the rally had never happened no the the defenders here the arrow towers aren't taking any damage uh and then the rally itself is just just goes away um but it does sort of waste time right um time is a time is of the essence in kvk you know as time goes on this can heal more and more right uh, so even though they're not taking severely wounded or deads or anything like that, it's still annoying that you could just, you know, sort of pile around a flag and then the rally just can't hit it. Right. That's like super annoying. Now, of course, if there is field presence, if the enemy um, was able to come in here and kind of push us out, well, then obviously they could clear us and then the rally goes through. And then the inverse happens in that if they surround our flag, well, then we are blockaded from getting into our flag, meaning we can't actually reinforce that flag and so that's sort of led to the meta for the past 24 hours changing to building walls of towers um and also surrounding flags with your field presence as you can see here um our alliance here shout out to qv uh, our alliance has formed basically a perfect circle around this flag uh this is our flag and if they rally this flag they can't 
hit it they just like they would need to come in with field presence and clear all of this stuff out uh in order to actually hit the flag basically launching a rally on this flag right now would be pointless without field presence because it would just get stopped it would just stop at the arrow tower or it would stop at the troops and yes the arrow towers do blockade as well okay so you don't run through this if you have a rally um and so again i'm pretty sure lilith is is sort of changing this okay but the blockade feature is still going to be in the game mode and that's one of the things that i wanted to talk about um it seems that the blockade feature i mean i want i really just want to talk to the developer who looked at this who looked at a screenshot of this and was like you know what you know what would make rise of kings better player collision like dude they're on top of each other all there is is collision you can't move anywhere in kvk and that's the big thing that's the big problem that i have with the blockade feature in this new kvk uh is that it gives the advantage to the team that is already winning that doesn't seem like it's very fair so basically what, what we've noticed over the past uh, 24 hours or so um is that when the enemy team is at their peak time right because our enemies i believe are mostly in china at this point um so their peak time is inverse with our peak time and so when they have more field presence they get the added bonus of having more blockades meaning they're going to be blocking our troops more than we're going to be blocking theirs because they outnumber us so it actually is easier for them to swarm our troops down uh, and we can't move like you literally can't move when you're blockaded you end up seeing a little red exclamation point next to your commander icon that says hey you're trying to go in a direction that you can't actually walk because there is a blockade in your way and basically what that means is you're stuck in place you've been put into quicksand basically and you're just going to get swarmed down now we've also noticed that during our peak times when we have control over the field we really have control over the field because again you fill in the gaps between these cities right like if, if we're going to attack this flag here we're basically just going to put a bunch of armies all in between all these cities here so as soon as they put troops out uh we surround them and then they're blockaded they can't go back to their city they can't retreat to a flag they can't move at all and that's the biggest thing that i that i found with the blockade system is that it's more so just frustrating right uh it's not a horrible idea especially on paper and especially because in real war like in, in the part of war strategy in real life is to control the enemy's flow and movement and where they can and can't go um and so it makes sense and honestly the feature itself inherently isn't that bad i don't hate it but it does feel really punishing and really bad when you're just playing the game and then all of a sudden you're you just can't move because you're completely surrounded uh by enemies and even if you're not the one targeted like let's say it's a big murder ball on top of another big murder ball um even if they're not hitting your units you still can't move right because they're 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 blockades so you're kind of just stuck in this pack and you're just like oh, I don't know what to do like I can't I can't do anything so um that's that's sort of the part where it's it's not horrible but it feels bad like it's like oh well I can't move so like think about what makes lag so frustrating is that you don't have control over your commanders you don't have control over what happens next there's nothing you can do about getting attacked and blockades in murder balls feels the same as if you had a massive lag spike because it's basically just all your units uh in the murder ball oh, oh we can't move oh we can't go anywhere and you're basically just sitting there and you guys you just gotta hope that um your team wins the the fight right uh and that you can leave there unscathed um but but you most of the time or you know probably 50 50 uh you're gonna you're gonna run back to your hospital uh either frowny facing or close to it because again you you, you just can't move i mean that's the most detrimental thing to have happened to your troops in the open field is not moving so that's been really interesting um on top of that you have the new uh, arrow tower feature where you get access to Torgni and Wafura these are two legendary commanders that are expertise as soon as you get into this game mode uh and these are engineering commanders meaning that they are mainly controlling siege units and you can use them to build an arrow tower in the open field and you saw that here in the video so these arrow towers have a radius around them and they can target troops 
uh in that radius and you can even set them to aggressive mode and they can start to sort of auto attack without you even having to control them which is actually pretty cool they deal slightly wounded units uh which is which is nice um but it's still pretty it's a pretty good strategy right and the reason for that is because you get these commanders for free which means if you are a free to play player or a low spender or somebody who is you know brand new to season of conquest you don't have that many good commanders um, you gain access to these arrow towers which sure you're not going to fill the enemy's hospital but if you have a cluster of these towers sort of like we have uh over here well now you have a bunch of players who are sort of chipping away at the enemy from a safe distance uh which just gives free to play players something to do and a way to contribute in kvk without needing to have good commanders because these commanders are given to you for free uh and also even though it's only dealing slightly wounded units that's still bringing the total unit number of that uh, army in the open field down right that's the the number of health units that can fight so let's say you have 200,000 units and because you've just been taking chip damage it brings you down to 150,000 uh well now you're you have a quarter less troops to bring into an actual fight against another player and so you are immediately at a troop disadvantage um if you are sort of playing in the enemy's territory right if you're on the offense and they're effectively defending with these arrow towers um then th that's a pretty that's a pretty good way to again have free-to-play players do something pretty useful uh while also you know not needing to have new commanders so i don't i don't really hate the, these um the arrow towers are good because it takes a while to build them it takes two minutes to actually build and then you can convert them back into regular siege units and that takes a few seconds now one thing that you that you have to know is that um you know even though it seems kind of cheap that you get to deal free chip damage at a distance um if you get surrounded as an arrow tower like you're pretty much melted immediately gg nothing you can do uh these are still at the end of the day siege units in here right um and you know even with these two legendary commanders they're still it's siege and they're slow like these commanders are really slow i mean like look at this guys i mean you are you are just really going not very fast across the across the open field so it's not like these are overpowered um it may feel like that at times but then once you realize like oh like you're you're just taking slightly wounded and if you can just get up to the tower you just swarm it down and then you're good to go i actually don't hate this as a mechanic and i think that it's pretty good you know when you compare this this kvk to other kvk game types that we've seen in the past this definitely feels better than um you know march of the ages for example holy smokes that was a an atrocious um literally unplayable uh kvk it just was not even remotely fun and this game mode is much more fun i i definitely think so now on top of the arrow towers that you can build yourself um your alliance can also build arrow towers or at least convert your regular arrow or your regular um flags into arrow towers and these are similar in function to what you can do as a player with uh wafura and torgni uh, in that they have a special radius that you can see here on the map and they will attack things in that radius and again deal slightly wounded uh to those to those things but mainly what they're going to be doing is preventing other enemies from teleporting within that area so if you notice here um there are spots to teleport on on this enemy land right enemies could be teleported here 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 right there's plenty of spots for them to teleport in this area but they haven't teleported here because it's too close to that arrow tower and that's why you see the first players are right outside that that area and what happens is if you teleport within that area without a shield on um this tower is immediately going to start hitting your city it's going to hit your city and it's not going to deal any damage to any of the troops or anything inside the city but it does chip away at your wall what this means is that once your wall hits zero you are forced to teleport out uh it teleports you back to your starting zone so it doesn't teleport you to home kingdom okay it brings you back to your starting zone and then it gives you what appears to be an eight hour peace shield for free so it's kind of cool because it doesn't punt like it doesn't actually you don't get zeroed by sitting next to uh an arrow tower or if your enemies just happen to convert an a flag into an arrow tower the cities within that radius aren't zeroed um but they are forced to teleport out and even if you teleport next to an arrow tower and then you go into your into your um boost and you pop your own peace shield you use your own peace shield I should say it doesn't stop you you still get hit by the arrow tower even with a a peace shield which is super annoying it's just so annoying that you can't even peace shield um it, and, and the arrow tower will still hit your city through that peace shield so it really um forces uh, a bit of distance between the the actual um tower 
and the strong players and i think that that's good because you know if if you're if you're like let's say on the enemy side here the pink is the enemy team here um if you're a mega whale you could have two mega whales sitting right next to this flag and they launch rallies and they can just immediately reinforce the rally with no no downsides or consequences and it's very hard to stop them and you can only do chip damage for like a second or two before they just dissolve into the rally uh and so with this you know there's there's a forced radius basically you know the closest you can rally from is here or here and that's it so if you want to reinforce you're gonna have to walk to the rally okay which gives a little bit of space to have field presence and have some open field fighting and things like that and again at the end of the day I actually don't really hate this feature I think the Alliance arrow towers are kind of cool it adds a new dimension and a new strategy for building flags around the map right you actually want to build your flag as close to enemy cities as possible now uh, because it will force even more of them to teleport out once the arrow tower is actually built so uh, this is you know these are kind of just thoughts that I've uh, that I've had and observations that I've made over the past sort of 24 hours of fighting in you know after the the past four openings and overall it's been relatively enjoyable but again when you have a system in place that heavily favors giving an advantage to the team that already is has an advantage um that's where it starts to become a problem and that's why I'm actually not a fan of the blockade mode it's just it's super frustrating and again if you just have mega field presence it's even more punishing than it was before and and that just doesn't feel very good um it's it's like you can't even play the game when you have that much collision involved and again I just can't imagine the person just whoever thought of that was like oh yeah let's just add player collision into into a into a game mode that is like literally known for being plagued with all sorts of like lag and bugs and delays and all this other stuff because of just how server intensive it is uh and they're like yeah like why don't we just have players bump into each other like what the hell man that is such a stupid idea but anyway um that's sort of my thoughts and opinions so far of this new power up game mode um if you guys have been playing this then go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you think of the new heroic anthem power up how are you enjoying it have you found any interesting bugs do you like the arrow towers or not i would love to hear from you guys uh in the comment section below if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and as always make sure you go down there and drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon